In this video tutorial, we're going to demonstrate how to create a mixed report in Adaptive Builder. And by mixed, we mean being able to combine a report generated using the compiler and also singular predefined formatted reports, for example, design strips, and also just custom graphical reports that the user generates as a screenshot. We'll go ahead now and get started and enter Adaptive Builder. Now for this single level floor, we're going to go ahead and run through just the general analysis, meshing, design of punching shear, design of flexural reinforcement, just the different um, options that are available to actually produce results needed for the report. So we have a single level post-tension slab. I can go to the tendon ribbon, show the ribbon or show the tendons here in the slab. And the first thing we're going to do is just mesh the slab. So we'll go ahead and mesh this using the default mesh size. Uh, the second thing we'll do is analyze this. So here we have some service and strength combinations and also crack deflection um, combination and long-term uh, prediction for deflection. We'll go ahead and run that, select OK. Okay, once the analysis is done, we'll go directly to the punching shear check. So we can go up here to floor design, set up our shear design options. Those have already been defined for this model. And then we're going to execute punching shear. And we can see graphically, we can always produce results um, real time in the interface here by selecting analysis, for example. I'll go back and select a strength combo. And we have, for punching shear, we have results, um, graphical results for punching shear. We can also produce graphical reports, or excuse me, tabular reports for punching from reports, punching. We'll, we'll actually use those reports in the overall report that we're going to create. The next thing we want to do is design the strips in order to get a um, stress checks uh, and also reinforcement for the model. So we'll go up here to floor design. I'm going to generate our design strips. The program generates strips in both the X, let's go to a plan view, X and the Y directions. Okay, I want to turn off the elements and the tendons so we can control the visibility by um, showing tendons off on and also under analysis I can turn off on the, um, the shell elements. We'll leave the tendons on in this case. Going back to floor design, we're going to design the sections now. Once the sections are designed, we can go back and we can actually run now the crack deflection calculation from analysis. We're going to run crack deflection. Okay, we'll select okay. I'll go back to my default display. And we're going to go over to File under Title Block Information. We want to set up uh, the title, gener uh, general title, specific title. The headers will actually be predefined if we use a preformatted single singular report. And I'll show us, uh, show you how you can um, see that information. So we're just going to call this Report Model One Specific Title. We'll just call it Block A, for example. And we could also include block information down on the bottom right, block one. We might, you know, say September 2019, building, uh, building one, whatever you want to enter there for block one and two. So we're going to save that information. Now we're going to produce a tabular set of results or reports using what we call the report compiler. So we'll go to reports. Under reports, we're going to open the report compiler. And for this particular example, we're going to select the following. We're going to select the report cover, the list of contents. We want to select the load combinations and cases, material and design criteria. Um, we're going to also look at the punching shear reinforcement. Okay, so we'll open up punching shear, select punching shear reinforcement, plan geometry. Um, 
tendon plan, etc. Other reports we're going to look at will all be graphical. So we're only using this to generate the tabular report. Cover, list of contents, cases, combinations, material, and punching shear reinforcement. We'll go ahead now to file and we'll generate this compiled report. Now when it's a tabular report we can really only produce this as an RTF, not a PDF. So we'll go ahead and select RTF. This will produce the report. We have our title sheet, table of contents, combinations, materials, and also the punching shear reinforcement here for the different columns listed. Okay, this is saved in the model folder. So if I navigate to the location of this particular model folder, I'll go up here to this model folder under reports. This is saved here as a combined report. I can save it as a different name. So I'll go ahead and just do a file save as. And we're going to um, save this in the, in the same folder that I just showed. So we'll go back up here to floor, uh, floor pro reporting report. And I'm going to give this a more specific or user defined name. So this is going to be tabular building one. It's saved here as an RTF. Okay, I could also save it as a PDF. I mean, you can save it through Word, which opens the RTF document. That's the default program opening that extension. We're going to go ahead and just save it again here as an RTF. I could have done this originally also. So we'll come here now and I'll just save this as a PDF document. And this is our tabular report as a PDF. Okay, we'll close that. And I'm actually going to close the compiler. Now what we want to do is produce some singular graphical reports. We're going to produce first the plan geometry. These are all predefined. So if I go to reports, uh, structural, or here at the bottom you can see there's a graphical report section. If we select plan geometry, I could put user comments. If I just fill this out and say plan geometry building one, for example, the program will produce a graphical report of this particular um, set of, of information, let's say with the column tags, the slab tags, etc. You can manipulate this. I can move this tag, for example, into here and so on. The program will produce this report based on what is shown currently on screen. Okay, this just essentially takes us into a reporting mode for that particular report. We'll go back to reports, structural, plan geometry, we can enter the user comments. The information that it's going to use for the title block, if I come back into title block, you can see the header gets predefined as structural plan. The user could put in comments. Once you select that report, okay, then we're going to actually print the report. We're going to do a singular print. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to print this to PDF uh, in this case. I'm going to place this in the reporting folder again that we talked about previously. And we'll just go ahead and name that. Okay, so this is now just a, a single print of that one particular view. We can repeat this for multiple predefined singular reports. For example, tendon plan. If we go into tendons, tendon plan, this allows us to now show the different parameters or properties of the tendons that we want to represent. I'll do control points. I'm going to use the effective force, the total force, and also maybe the number of strands, for example. This will produce the data uh, on the sheet relative to that particular report. If you want to increase the font or change the font height of anything that's produced here, we can go to visibility, view settings. Under tendons, I can modify the symbol height. Let's say it's four, and let's also modify the font height to 10. I'll select OK. And that modifies what you're seeing on screen. Again, we can go back to file. Under title block, notice the header changes. Again, we can make comments. I can go ahead now and print this report. I'll save it again in the exact same folder. Now we have tendon plan. 
Okay, I'll exit. That cleans the, the palette, if you will, for what's shown on screen. We can now go into the additional predefined reports. The other reports that we would want to produce are, let's say, dead load plan. That can be done from loading under graphical dead load plan, live load plan, or other user defined general loads would be listed here. Support lines in the X and Y would be under design strips. There are support lines X, support lines Y, design strips X, design strips Y. Um, we might want to look at the stress checks for the different um, design strips. So maybe we want to isolate the X direction, top stress, X direction, bottom stress, and also the pre-compression. There's a couple of ways we can do this. One is in the report compiler. This technically can be produced as a tabular report. If we open up the design strip reports, this will produce a legend, a design value code check, and a summary report for each of the strips. If we go back to file, generate an RTF report, this will be produced as an RTF. And that report looks something like this. We have our legend, different support lines with the stress graph shown, um, moments and reinforcements. So we have graphical reports. This is also just a summary for each design strip or support line. And that goes through the entire model and summarizes all of the support lines. So that's, that's one option to give you some detailed information. A similar approach, we're going to print this particular report as a um, PDF. Come back and go into our report folder. Okay, and we'll save that as a PDF. Now, one other thing we can do, let's assume that we just want purely graphical reports for stresses, top, bottom, flexural stress, pre-compression for both the X and the Y directions. Because those are not um, contained as a predefined singular report under design strips, for example, then what we may want to do is um, is just produce these as, let's say, custom reports that, that the user produces, right? So for design strips in the in the X direction, for example, I can go into the X direction, I'll turn on my my design strips. Maybe I don't want these lines to be as heavy, so here I can actually, let's turn on both directions, and we're going to customize the line weight for those design uh, cuts. We'll go under uh, Home, Select by Type. I'm going to select the support lines, all of them. We're going to modify all of them, and we're going to use a line thickness here of 1. Okay, and we'll select OK. And that uh, reduces the line thickness. The default in this case is 2, so that changes that. And we'll go back now and filter out and show only the X. And in the results settings, we're going to set the loads, for example, to total service load. Under analysis, we're going to go to design sections, and we're going to um, go up to stresses. Maybe this is going to be the bottom stress graph for this, uh, uh, for this direction. Now, here I have the shaded on. I'll go ahead and turn off shading, because that obviously doesn't allow us to see the graphs. We'll go back over here to wireframe. And let's go back up to floor design. Okay, we'll just have toggled that bottom stress. This is now our stress diagram. Now, because this is you know a fairly large slab, the resolution in order to see these values along the diagrams, we would have to increase the, the text size. That would mean that the text would become overlapped. So this is going to be a vectorized image once we save it and produce it as either PDF or RTF. But this is, this is one particular graphical screenshot that we want to print as is. Okay. In this case, we need to go back to the title block. You can see there's no header because it's not a predefined report. And I'll call this uh, X direction bottom stress. Okay. And we'll save that. I'll now go ahead and I'll print this view. So now we're just printing whatever is shown on screen as a, as a default or as a customized um, sheet for our for our uh, report, and we can we can call this X bottom. Let's say we would then change this. Maybe we want to look at now the top stress. I'd go back under the header information. This is X 
top stress. Okay, so this has to be done if we're doing customized default views. And we can go back now and print that. This will be carried out for the, the top and bottom for the X, top and bottom for the Y direction. I could switch over now to Y, save these reports, and then I might also want to do this for the pre-compression. The last report that we might want to make is deflection. So we're going to go ahead and change the view. This is also not a predefined singular report. If I change the view, I'm going to go over here to long-term cracked, long-term deflection. I'll go back to analysis. I'm going to just display the result that I want to create the report from. You can see I have those strips turned on. I'll turn those off in the background. We could either produce this as a gradient view, or I might go over here to settings and change this to a fixed range. Um, and then we get something that looks like this. Again, we'll go ahead and change our title block. We're going to call this long-term cracked deflection. And we'll print that. Okay, once we have all of the different individual reports, tabular reports from the compiler, all of the reports created, then we can always go back to the location where we have those reports saved. And I'm just going to combine these. So I can use, um, for example, Adobe Acrobat. There's also third-party free software that you can use to combine PDFs. So I'll just take this, and I can merge and combine this report inside of one of those uh, one one of those programs. And you would have, you know, a, a, a full PDF report or full um, RTF report, depending on what type of report you're wanting to produce. If you have any questions, please contact us at support at adaptsoft.com. Thank you.